Mama, take my chillin' back, no. Have them crown the beam, down, down. On the green, down, down. Mama, take my chillin' back, no. The town of Prentice essentially, essentially is a white island in the middle of a black county. It's what it amounts to. The sheriff department and the police department are viewed separately, uh, mainly because one, the sheriff department is predominantly black, the uh, police department is predominantly white. Uh, we don't try to uh, integrate those departments. And when you have a community that's divided, when you have a community that has a predominantly um, white police force and with um, no one to um, combat the actions, then you get this kind of thing. It's my understanding that when the police searched Jamie Smith's duplex, that they found a relatively small amount of marijuana, I believe in a bowl. I do know for sure that when they searched Corey's side of the duplex, they found the remains of a, well, they found a roach. They found nothing else in his duplex that was illegal. Nothing. And yet that was the basis, if you believe that he knew that the police were outside before he fired, that he was going to kill all the police because he didn't want to have to pay a $100 fine for possession of a marijuana roach. I mean, it does not make sense. It does not make sense. Never has to me, never will. And it's curious that uh, Corey's been tried and convicted and been in parts of him for years. Jamie Smith's never, never darkened the door of the courthouse in Jeff Davis County, even to this day that I know about. And I would have known about it. When Corey went off to jail, the children, they quit coming around as much because they couldn't stand the idea of coming and he wasn't here. So we just quit having the family dinners and just pretty much quit everything. It's taking a toll on everybody, you know. And sometimes it's just hard to get up some days. Corey's family hired defense attorney Rhonda Cooper to represent him during the trial. During the couple of years between the time that Corey's trial lawyer was hired to represent him and the time he actually went to trial, he actually talked with her a, a, at the most three times. This is a capital murder charge. Stephen Hain, who ostensibly is a forensic pathologist, was the state's expert. This is the WLBT 6 p.m. report. As a medical examiner, Dr. Stephen Hain testifies in court on a weekly basis to his findings from autopsies. His business, Pathology Consultation Incorporated, performs between one and 2,000 autopsies a year. But an opinion editorial in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend accuses Dr. Hain of making mistakes in those autopsies because he performs too many. Senior editor of Reason Magazine, Radley Balco, also claims Haynes' testimony about his findings often falls in line with what the prosecution is trying to prove. Dr. Haynes says he is certified but could not remember the name of the organization when we spoke with him. He testified it was impossible for Corey to have been lying, sitting or lying on the floor and to have fired in an upward angle at Ron Jones and that bullet to have come down at an angle like it was in Ron's body. Well... That was later proved to be not scientific, not correct, actually. Corey had no expert to come in and testify on his behalf that, hey, that's bogus science. It could, that trajectory of that bullet could easily be explained where it would match the trajectory of the bullet in the door frame that's on an upward angle. I think from the get-go, from the preliminary hearing on up, I don't think that. I know that there were things done that I would have done very differently that I think any, most any other defense lawyer would have done very differently. Little things that a lawyer should know how to do, she didn't know how to do any of them. On January 24, 2004, 
after a little more than an hour of deliberation, a jury of 10 white men and two black women found Corey May guilty of murder in the first degree. Later that afternoon, the same jury sentenced Corey May to death. That was the hardest day of all when they said that verdict. When they read the verdict, the lawyer looked at me, and I knew she was going, she looked at me and Dot, and she had tears in the eyes, and I said, well, I'm not going to cry, because I'm, you know, I'm going to show them, you know, I'm not going to cry. But when he looked at me, and he threw his finger up and kid, you know, kissed me and winked his eye, that's what made me start crying. He just kept saying, Mama, I love you. Please take care of my children. And I still have a hard time with that because I know, I know ain't no way he would have did anything to jeopardize him being home with his family and especially his kids. You know, it all depends on who you ask whether the shooting was justified or not. If you ask the black people, they feel sort of like I do, yeah. I think that most of the community think that because the officer died, it's very tragic because we know both families. But being that the situation was like it was, I think it was justified. And I think most of the community agree that it was a justified act. The reaction of the population of the town of Prentice in general was certainly they were, they were glad that Corey was convicted and sentenced to death. Uh, in fact, uh, some of the people that I personally know of were joyful. I hate to say that, but they were. Like I'm a baby child, that we not tried so hard. Oh.